So I want to talk about the footings for concrete insulated panel homes. There's two ways we can do our footings and insulated. One is to fully wrap the footing with insulation and we use a geofoam structural insulation underneath the footing and then we use um, the same product for the walls. Uh, I prefer that system because we can build the whole footing out of insulation and then just pour the concrete in in the trough per se or the forms that we've made out of insulation and there's no stripping and there's no throwing of water away and there's less waste. Uh, another way to do it is in BC in our climate is to bury the footing about six inches further down and then we just insulate the side of the um, the footing wall and that insulation then connects to the concrete wall insulation so there's a continuous wrap of insulation from footing to wall and why we want to do that is because the ground is 10 degrees your interior of your home is 20 degrees so Lots of people think that heat loss goes, or heat goes up. Heat goes to the least path of resistance. So if your underground or the earth is 10 degrees, heat is gonna go down. And that's why we put insulation, we want a continuous wrap of insulation around every part of your building. It's like your body, you wanna put, in the winter, you wanna put heavy socks on and shoes on. You're not going outside wearing bare feet in winter. So by insulating underneath your concrete footing, you are putting socks and shoes on your building. And this is what makes for a comfortable home. And it's very easily accommodated with the concrete insulated panel building that we do, the CIP buildings, super, super easy to accommodate. I'll get into the chat of different types of insulations. That's another video, but, um, that's, that's just the footing component. Now, people walk into their homes and like, oh, my floors are so warm. And the reality is why their floor is so warm is because they're just pumping heat into the earth and heating up, heating up the planet. That's what we not, do not want to do. So there, what happens is your, your outer extremities are probably 36 degrees and your floor and your house is probably gonna be 21.3 degrees, which is the ultimate temperature I found. But, so your floors will feel cold after time. If you, so that, that's when you know you've got a high performance home. So that's one caveat that you might wanna consider. Um, so the way around that is isolate your heating areas in the home. So you'd wanna isolate things like your kitchen, um, places where you're standing around a lot, your bathroom. So when you walk in, you get the sensation of nice heated floors. And that's all you need to heat your home. Because these houses are so super insulated from, from footing under slab walls and then on top of your roof, they don't need much heat. So when you do heat, you just wanna heat those specific areas where you're gonna get that nice satisfaction. And that's gonna put a smile on your face. So I'll talk about under slab insulation. Now again, under the slab, you want to have at least eight to 10 inches of insulation. And the reason for that again, that is the sole of your foot. You don't want that to be touching bare ground all the time. So we put we, that insulation that comes up the side of the footing wall connects to the under slab insulation. So it's super important that we get all of our services like plumbing, electrical and everything under the insulation slab. And the reason why that is important is because it's a lot of time and a lot of cutting of insulation when you're trying to cut it over pipes. So for example, I've got an example here of some pipes that are not laid very straight. So for us to cut insulation over that would be very, very tough and time uh, consuming. So we don't want to, we would rather just fill over that and then put the insulation on a nice 
subgrade of backfill. Now the insulation under the slab, you gotta remember two inches of EPS is a vapor barrier. Always lap the joints, so we'd do two layers of four inches and, and then we can lap those joints so there's no air leakage through the joints. We can, if you like, and maybe the building inspector will argue the point, put a vapor barrier on top of that insulation before the um, concrete. Again, you've got to remember concrete is, two inches of concrete is a vapor barrier. So you've got all these vapor barriers happening and the reason why you maybe want to put plastic in there is because you, if the concrete cracks, that's potential place for an air leakage. And we don't want air leaking out of your home because we want to keep the home airtight and we want to use a mechanical ventilation system to make your house breathe. And that's another video on HRVs or ERVs. Um, and I'll get to that. So again, what we're trying to do with a slab, under slab insulation is just eliminate the heat loss. Because you gotta think your slab is probably 30% of your household square footage that is on the envelope. So when you eliminate the heat loss through the floor, you're making your house in more energy efficient. In, in our world, energy efficient equals comfortable living and a healthy place to live in.